Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where we share stories of small victories over those who have wronged you. Thank you guys for subscribing, likes, and supporting in the comments. The first story. I showed the way to Walmart to the client who yelled at me. The second story. Elderly woman spoke with another person. The third story. Customer wanted to buy fireworks at the wrong price, but then changed his mind. Today's first story is, the prices are clearly marked. Once upon a time I worked in a deli, in a privately owned grocer in a small mountain town, in a particular mountain estate. It's the kind of town that only survives due to the dwindling resources in the local mines, and whatever profits can be made during hunting season. It was once explained to me, in fact, that if a retail store was unable to make enough money during hunting season to cover operating costs for the year, that store would simply not make it. So you can understand that we went out of our way to make the hunters happy. Now, as I'm sure anyone who has a hunting-based economy can tell you, as each season passes, it becomes harder and harder to keep said hunters happy. You do this long enough, and you no longer even need to pay attention to the season, to tell what a person is hunting with. Bow hunters are incredibly friendly and polite. Muzzle loaders are more gregarious, but still jovial, and also very polite. Rifle hunters have a tendency to be, let's just say, more entitled. I'd like to take this moment to clarify, this doesn't apply to all rifle hunters. The vast majority of hunters in general are decent people, who treat other people with respect and manners. But it is bad enough that the uptick in rude customers happens to coincide with the third day before rifle season begins, then gets worse with each subsequent rifle season, every single year. There are real reasons for this. These people pay a pretty penny to hunt in our forests, then shill out thousands to stay in someone's decked out woodshed, and God help them if they need to hire a guide, only to try and shoot at animals that have been chased around for months at this point. Then they come to our little grocery store and have to pay double to triple the price, they would have had they only thought to stop at a Wally World on their way in. There's not a single day that goes by during rifle season that you don't get several jibs about how we jack up our prices to take advantage of the hunters. Some of them are said jokingly. Some are flat out aggressive. Some outright demand that they get the local price. Spoiler, we pay these D prices year round, and I promise I don't make enough to apply for a local tag, much less the $5,000 a piece these people are spending to come camp for the weekend. So we get to the last, rudest rifle season. These cough-cough gentlemen come up to the deli and order their cold cuts for the weekend. They're friendly enough, excited for their vacation, making jokes, asking for samples, which I'm more than happy to provide. One of the benefits of working for an independent, we can do that. They order enough for their party of four grown men and one growing teenager to eat over several days, a pound of chicken here, a few pounds of beef there. All of it shaved into the thinnest sheets of meat I can manage, as per their request. I toss the last bag of savory roast beef onto their pile, which all said and done turned out to be just short of seven pounds of various cuts that have eaten up the last half of an hour of my life. One of them goes to grab the goods, looks at the label on the last bag and says, this isn't right, you overcharged me. Now, I've been playing this game several times a day for about a month and a half at this point, and I'm nothing if not professional, even when calling D-bags out on their BS. I smile real big and go, oh, I'm so sorry, let me check the prices real quick and fix that for you. I walk around to their side of the counter and make a big show checking the price per pound on the label versus the price that's marked directly on the meat case, adding up out loud for them how much that would be. Yep, two pounds of meat, spot on. At $7.99 a pound, that's $15.98 for this bag, and proceed to do this for every bag they ordered, with the sweetest demeanor I can muster. But this a-hole isn't having it. I'm trying to gouge them. Our tiny hick town just wants to suck their lifeblood, keep biting the hand that feeds us, and see if anyone comes back here to shop again, asking if I get a bonus for effing him over on the lunch meat. He seriously spends the next 10 minutes insulting our store, our town, me, my family line, interspersed with both veiled and brazen demands that I reduce the prices for them. Finally, they decide that they're going to take their business to the other grocery store. I smile. The nearest grocery store is Walmart. He doesn't even let me finish. Walmart? We could be shopping at Walmart instead of this SH hole? How do we get to Walmart? I smile even bigger. Easy. You just turn left on your way out of the parking lot and go to the stoplight. Then turn right and it'll be at the next light. You can't miss it. They stomp off, leaving their cart of 3.2 beers and chips and their $60 of now warming lunch meat. I wander behind them and watch to see that they did indeed peel out of the bar parking lot in the direction I advised. I didn't lie for the record. Like I said, I'm nothing if not professional. That's exactly how you get to the nearest Walmart, 49 miles and two towns away. Not as far as I know and there were two cashiers who worked the next morning waiting for them to come complain and they definitely spent more. In addition to the gas mileage, that particular Walmart is smaller than your average Wally World has fewer choices, and runs about 20% higher prices than the one in the other direction. But the other one is technically 7 miles further away, so, you know. The next story is, an angry customer makes a fool of herself. This happened about 10 years ago. It was a few days after Christmas, and I'd been sent out to repair some equipment at a Kmart store. The job went well, and I'd already loaded my truck and cleaned up. All I had left to do was get a manager's signature on my paperwork. 
I stopped at the customer service desk and asked for him to be paged, then waited for him to show up. I was still standing there with my clipboard, not really paying attention to much of anything, when this little old lady walks in the door, noticed my uniform and started heading my way. I should backtrack here and mention a couple of things. The first, being my employer had changed our uniforms about six months earlier, to a design that made me look like an assistant manager at every single store I set foot in. People were always stomping me, asking where things were or something similar. I even had people stop me at a fast food chain on my lunch break to complain about something or other. I wasn't really annoyed by it, most of the time I thought it was funny. The second thing that I need to mention is, while you can't judge a book by its cover, you can sometimes tell a lot about a person by their face. The little old lady in this story was no exception. Her face looked like the last smile that had graced it had been some time during the Eisenhower administration. I started to tell her that I didn't work there. I got as far as, I'm sorry ma'am, before she barked at me to shut up Sonny and listen to me for a minute. That's a direct quote. To this day, I'm not sure if I shut up because I was shocked at her rudeness or just because my brain was trying to work out whether or not I had actually heard someone use the term sunny in actual conversation. She took advantage of my stunned silence to launch into a diatribe about her experience the last time she shopped there. Something about coupons and how her stuff was bagged, etc, etc, etc. When she paused for a moment to take a breath, I tried to tell her again that I didn't work there. Ma'am, I can't. She interrupted me by screaming. I said shut up, then launches into her diatribe again. Now, I tend to avoid confrontations, but I can usually hold my own. This old bat had just dragged me into uncharted territory though. Nothing in my life up to that point has prepared me to deal with a screaming elderly woman half my size. I was more than half afraid she was going to have a stroke right there on the spot. I let her run down a bit and tried again, a bit louder. Ma'am, I don't work. She then tries to clamp her bony hand over my mouth. I had to fend her off by holding my clipboard in front of my face. At that moment, some of my grandpa's wisdom came to the rescue. I remember him telling me once that when someone is that angry, anything you say will only make them worse. If you just calmly stand there and let them rant until they wind down, then you can deal with them. The best part is they don't get much satisfaction out of it, and they end up looking like an even bigger jerk than if you would have yelled back. So I made up my mind to just stand there nodding and listening until she stopped again. I kept my mouth shut. She stared at me for a long moment and then says pointedly, well? I responded with a mild, well what? Old lady, aren't you going to help me? I keep my voice calm, but speak louder than absolutely necessary. No, but if you want my opinion, I'd go talk to someone who works here. Finally, her eyes darted to the logo on my uniform shirt and widened a bit when she realized that it did not say Kmart. I suddenly realized how quiet it's gotten. A quick glance over my shoulder revealed everyone with an earshot had stopped to watch the show. With all the screaming on her part, that included pretty much everyone in the front half of the store that was already busy with people making returns and people buying whole cartloads of Christmas clearance items. Someone snorted, another made a choking noise, and then the laughter started. It hadn't struck me as funny up to that point, but when it did, it was all I could do to control myself. She glanced around, opened her mouth and closed it, as if she started to say something, then thought better of it. Thanks for the advice, Grandpa. You were a far wiser man than I ever realized. And the last story is, be careful what you demand, because we might give it to you. Background. I own and operate my own retail store. It's actually a seasonal fireworks tent but not like any fireworks tent you've seen before. It's 2,400 square foot of fireworks heaven. Story, a guy came in to pick up some fireworks. He was having a party and wanted to put on an impressive show for his friends. I spent about 20 minutes walking him through the store, explaining the different items to him and showing him videos of the stuff to help him pick out exactly what he wanted. He mentioned a couple of times how he usually goes to other store and how their prices were cheaper. Each time I'd apologize, but I let him know that our prices were usually less than theirs and that I thought that we had beat them on each of the items in question. The third time it happened, I walked to our counter and grabbed the new catalog from other store. I found the stuff he had mentioned and showed him how we were in fact cheaper on every item that he had selected, and that's why I keep catalogs from my competitors on the counter. In fact, on a couple of items, we were about half of other store price. Amazingly, he didn't seem happy about it, but he kept shopping. By the time he was ready to check out, he had a rolling flat cart full of stuff. It was mostly large assortment packages, finale cakes and big mortar kits, with a few smaller items here and there. To speed things up and prevent us from having to unload all the big kits onto the counter, I started calling out the prices for the bigger items to the cashier, my dad. About halfway through, I got to one of the largest items, a massive mortar kit, and called out the price of $199.95. When my dad was ringing it in, the register display looked like it had screwed up, so I stopped him and went to check it out. Sure enough, the item had rung in at $19.95. While I'm talking to my dad about it, the customer walks over and demands to see the mistake. I show him that the last entry was for $19.95 instead of $199.95. He immediately tells me that I have to sell the item to him at the price that rang up. I showed him that the item itself had the correct price tag on it and that the cashier had just miskeyed it when he hadn't rung it in. The guy gets agitated and repeatedly starts telling me that I have to legally sell the thing to him at that price since the cashier had rung it in like that. 
I calmly explained that if the item had been priced wrong, I would sell it to him at the incorrect price, but since it was just a miss key, we would just void the last item rung in and do it again. Now armchair lawyer guy, ALG, starts yelling that he knows his rights and that I'm breaking the law, if I have the cashier change the price, and I don't sell it to him at the wrong price. Now I've had the staff screw up before when doing pricing, and if we put the wrong lower price tag on something, that's what I'm going to sell it to you for. I also know that unless it's an advertised price, I don't legally have to do it, but if I screwed up, I'm going to eat that mistake and reprice the item after we're done. Side note to Josh C, next time pay attention to the D price list when you're using the price gun, because I know most of these screw ups have your name on them. Also go back to school and don't do drugs. Me, are you telling me that legally, even if we screwed up, I can't have the cashier fix a mistake and that I have to sell you the item at whatever price was keyed into the register? ALG, yes, me, I guess we're going to have to charge him whatever you keyed in. I calmly walk back around the counter and pick up another item from his cart, a small fountain with a price tag of $9.95, and continued calling out the prices. When we were all done, my dad gave him the total. ALG, that can't be right, that's way too much. There's no way I got that much stuff. Dad, oops, looks like the fountain rang in for $995.95. Did you want to pay that in cash or with a credit card? ALG just glared at my dad for a few seconds then quietly asked if we could fix it. We happily fixed both mistakes, boxed up his items and sent him on his way with a smile. Thank you for watching.